Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. We're going to work with the tube. Hope I'll you feeling grand and always well in your world. Excuse me, my Volvic is repeating on me. Hello, very everybody. Uh, today's vid, everybody, I'm going to be telling you the top 10 guitars that I own. Uh, a few people have asked me, like, you know, if you could only, if you could only live with 10 guitars of yours, what, what would they be? So I thought I'd do it in a video. Uh, some I have here, some I don't have here. So uh, basically the ones I don't have here, I'll just, I'll natter about them. And the ones I do have here, I will show on cam. But, uh, yeah, some I don't have here. Some haven't, I, I'm kind of limited with space at Queenie's. So obviously I, I can only have a certain amount of guitars here. So uh, some haven't migrated over here yet. But if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, Dave, you're only allowed 10 guitars for the rest of your life out of your collection. Now, what are they going to be? I'm taking the rest away. You're only allowed 10. These would be those 10. So, at number 10 is a bit of a strange one for me. I never expected this. <coughs> People of YouTube. But number 10 for me is my Chapman Pro X guitar. Now, this guitar came... Um, and initially had lots of problems. I couldn't get it to stay in tune. Uh, I didn't like where the slick switch was, and I just didn't bond with the guitar at all. Like, I tried. I really tried. And I was like, meh. Nah. Not there. Not there. To the point I actually put it away. I put it in its hard case, and I put it away in the attic, and I was done with it. I was like, nope, it's not working for me. So I was kind of like a bit bummed out by it because it wouldn't stay in tune. The thing wouldn't stay in tune. I'd strum a chord and it would just literally, as you strummed a chord, it'd go, no. And I was like, huh? And then I realized it had hip shot walking tuners. And what I had been doing, people tube, and the mistake I made, which hopefully you won't now, is I'd been putting windings around the machine head, the post, um... And you don't do that with locking machine heads. You don't put any windings on. You just pull the string tight, tighten it on the little thing on the back, and tune it, and that's it. And as soon as I figured that thing out, it wouldn't go out of tune. That thing is more stable than a cement-made donkey. You know, it, it, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it's amazing. And also, another thing I had done to it, I, I've had it kind of fairly, fairly modded. Not, not, not like extensively, but I have had a few things done to it. So another thing I had done, I wish I had it here now, but it's with all my gigging stuff, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. But um, another thing I had done to it was I hated where the select switch was. It was kind of back, and where the tremolo arm rests when it's not in use... The tremolo arm covers a select switch, and because I like to flick uh, back between the neck and the bridge pickups a lot, I like I, I know I, I like the ability to move the select switch a lot. I really kind of like you know I, I, I jiggle that thing about like it's nobody's biz. Um, that was a big no-no for me. So I had a local guitar luthier uh, in Lincolnshire called John Lavoie, who was like a genius. Um, he actually specialises in making gypsy jazz guitars, but obviously, uh, so working on electric guitar is basically nothing. You know, this man makes acoustics. Um, and I had him actually move the select switch to a more traditional position so I could actually get to it. And we also put a five -way, uh, a three-way selector in it instead of a five-way. It came with a five-way, but I never used position two or four. I don't like the sound. It, it grates on me. It just, I just literally, I've never liked that sound. And uh, so I just used, uh, so John Lewis said, oh, I can put a freeway in if you want. And I was like, yes, please. So it's got a freeway selector and it's been moved. Uh, so that was one mod. Uh, the other mod we did is we routed out, well, I didn't, he did. He routed out the pickup cavities so I could sink the pickups lower. Because again, I don't like high pickups. And when I got the Chapman, the pickups were just too high. And the bridge pickup had no clean. I couldn't get the bridge humbucker low enough to clean up with my setup. And it was driving me mental. And the two uh, single coils were too high as well. And they were just sounding a bit harsh. And I didn't like it. So we routed them out and we sunk the pickups really low. So now, jobs are good. Because I was thinking initially I was going to have to change the pickups in the in the guitar. I think I was going to have to change the neck, the, the single coils and the humbucker. And in all fairness, I was kind of like, I don't want to do that. I want something different and I, I, in all fairness picture i'm not a fan of seeing my duncan pickups at all i'm just not a fan but i wanted something different to my other guitars you know i didn't want another strat sounding strat basically i wanted something that sounded a little bit different and did 
bridge the gap between a Strat and a Les Paul. That's what I wanted. I wanted something to bridge that gap. And I knew the Chapman had it in it. I just couldn't figure it out. And then we routed these uh, cav cavities out, moved the select switch, freeway selector, and it was kind of getting there. I'm like, ooh, hmm. And then the next final mod I did to this thing, Pure Tube, the next thing I finally did to it, is I put a one meg pot in it. The f it came with a five 500k pot in it, like most Humbug Guitar 2, like Les Pauls and whatnot. And I was just a bit like, it's just a bit dull. You know, the, the pickups are a bit dead and lifeless. And it reminded me of the Simodok and SSL ones I had in my first Oswald. I was a bit like, meh, I don't like them. And so I changed them out. But I've got evil sheep in that now. Um, but... As soon as I put a one meg pot in that guitar, the pickups came alive. And it immediately did that thing I wanted to do, where it bridges a gap between Les Paul and a Strat, so I can do everything on it. And it's been my go-to live guitar since then. You've seen it, if you've seen the gig vlogs, you know, you've seen that guitar appear quite a lot. It's always at gigs with me. And as a result of that, it's my main gigging guitar. You know, it's one of my main gigging guitars. I'm still hunting for those others but the chapman is a guitar i couldn't live without because of that it's just a beast live i love it live because like i said i can do all the Jimi hendrix kind of clean stuff and the john fashanti kind of clean stuff but then i can also kind of like get like humbuckery kind of les paul tones with the bridge humbucker and it's just amazing i love that guitar and it really was one of those things where i really didn't i didn't see that coming at all i really didn't it was totally weird like I, I i was ready to contact rob and say have you got another because this one's crap uh but i'm really glad i stuck at it and i'm glad we i did what i did to it so getting like john of water like changes the select switch uh change the position of a select switch route the pickup cavities deeper and do all sorts of different things to it another thing i've done as well with youtube is it was a matte finish when i got it and um i've actually sanded the top to a more of a satin kind of finish. Uh, oh, another thing as well. I've got, I've, got, I've, done, I've, I've quite, I've modded it quite a lot. But I've kind of given it a bit of a shine on top, so it's a little bit shiny, but not kind of gloss. It's not high gloss. It's just a little bit more, you know, it's not matte finish anymore. It's a bit more shiny. I did t kind of take a bit too much off on the on the lower bridge bit, but hey, it's okay. It's my guitar, so all's well. I didn't want to lose the actual finish of it. And in all fairness, at one point I was dictating spraying the whole thing white. Um, and that's still in there, but I don't know if I'm going to do that for you because it's a stunning looking guitar, but I just kind of wanted to make it mine. And because white's my favorite color, well, off white is my favorite color guitar. I was really, excuse me, extraordinarily tempted to spray the thing off white and relic it down to the actual dark finish it's got and let you literally let it wear through as years go on to kind of get back to that original finish that's underneath. And I still might do that, Pure Tube. Bear with me on that one. I don't know yet. I've been told that I can't do that. Uh, not by anybody at Chapman Guitars, by friends. You can't spray it. It's like, well, I'm kind of tempted to. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Pure Tube? Spray it white? I don't know. We'll find it. Or off white. And then let, let, it, let, it, let it wear and relic back through to its finish. I don't know. But... Uh, another thing I did Pure Tube as well is I sanded the arm contours. So, like, for instance, we use Queenie's bass here as an example. These parts on the Chapman when I got it what were far too sharp for my liking. I did not like them at all. So I sanded them, uh, ra I rounded them over. They were too kind of, like, angular like that, and I didn't like that. So I've, I've made them like that. So you can see bits where I've sanded the guitar to make it a bit more comfortable for me, you know, um... And, it, and again, like I say, it's a gigging guitar for me. It, it, funny enough, I don't feel any real pull to it when I'm not gigging. Uh, I don't really play it outside of gigging, which is why I don't have it here. It's actually in its gig bag with all my gigging stuff. You know, it, it, it just stays with that. Uh, and that that's it's my main gigging guitar. It's kind of like, it's a thing. Uh, but although I did record Wiki Game on it, the trio's version of Wiki Game, had to be that guitar. I don't know why, but I was just drawn to the Chapman for, for Wicked Game, and it worked perfectly. Um, the only guitar on Wicked Game that isn't the Chapman is the 79 Strat, which I used just for the Mel 9 bits. I, um, I used it for choir and, and string sounds, uh, just with the Mel 9. I, I never used the actual Strat's tone. I just used it because it responded better with the Mel 9. Anyway, 
So that's guitar number 10 people tube. So it's the Chapman Pro X. And again, that is one of those guitars that if somebody said, I'm taking all your guitars away bar 10, that would be number 10. I, that would, I wouldn't be able to let that guitar go. I do apologize about my phone. Uh, it would definitely be one of those guitars where I'm like, no, I can't, I can't let that one go. Which again, like I say, was a bit strange uh, to say the least. I didn't expect it. We started off very rocky, me and that guitar, but now we're in love. So, moving on to guitar number nine. Um, number nine is my Squire Jaguar. Now, the Squire Jag has done so much with me. I recorded all of Duke's Deluda's debut album, uh, and sadly the only album, uh, on that guitar. And I did pretty much all Duke's Deluda's gigs on that guitar, um, apart from the odd one here and there. But... There was just something very, very special about that guitar. And again, it's a guitar I can't live without. I really can't. It's just something very special about that, that Squire Jag. And again, um, if, you, if, you, if you're if if you you new to the channel, uh, you might not have seen it yet. But if uh, if you aren't new to the channel, you'll, you, you'll know it as, you know, I refinned it. When I, when I bought that guitar in 2016, it was Surf Green. Uh, but I've always wanted... I did the demo of it, actually, with it in Surf Green. Uh, but I always wanted a white jag with a matching headstock so i stripped off the green poly um and resprayed it with nitro it's uh it's it's olympic white nitro and it is wearing you know it, it's very wear. It, it's not white anymore it's kind of like going off color it's like uh, my mr white here uh which we'll we'll talk about in a bit um i'm sure a lot of you guessed number one uh if you've been here long enough anyway but yeah that was a guitar i just couldn't do without and it, it and it's just, it scratches that itch for, for Jaguar. And I love Jaguars. Like I say, if, if Stratocasters became, like, illegal, I would just play Jaguars all the time. You know, they are the next best thing for me. I wouldn't go Telecasters. I wouldn't go Les Pauls or anything like that. I would have to be a, ja a Jaguar. There's just something about them. And, and my Squire Jag, I've done so much with it, and it's got so many lovely memories attached to it. You know, Dukes Deluda being one of them. Dukes was probably the one of the best bands and most fun bands I've ever been in. Uh, and I, I just loved it. And I basically did pretty much 90% of what I did in that band on that guitar, um, minus a few bits here and there. And it was just it was just the guitar for that band. It sounded so perfect. And it was a bit oddball, like the music. And it, it worked. It was just great. And so it's got lovely memories attached to it. And it's just something I couldn't do without. I couldn't lose that guitar. You know, I really, I really love it very deeply. And, and again, it, it reminds me of literally some of the happiest times of my life. So, you know, why, why would you not want that? And again, it's got a sound like no other. Uh, that's been slightly modded as well, Pooja. Apart from obviously the finish and the matching headstock, uh, I actually changed the volume pot. The volume pot, Originally, it was a one uh, one meg pot, and it died fairly quickish. I don't know what had happened. It was just obviously weak. It was just a little alpha pot. And I changed it for a one meg full-size pot. Uh, uh, no, sorry. It was a one meg alpha pot, and I changed it for a 500k pot, full-size pot. I do apologize, people. I got it mixed up. I'm getting the Chapman mixed up with the Jag now. And I changed it, and it just mellowed the sound. Uh, because I think Jaguars and Jazzmasters come with a one meg pot as standard. And it's one of the reasons I don't really like um, Jazzmasters. Is that, that kind of, they make some tinny. Uh, but I don't really like Jazzmaster feel either, to be honest with you. They're, they're not really me. But anyway. But yeah, I, I've, I've modded uh, a few bits on that guitar. It's one of the very few guitars people choose, but I haven't stripped the lacquer off the neck as well, the back of the neck. Because I haven't needed to. Um... It's funny. It, it, I've done some very, very... Um, I remember doing a gig with Duke's Deluda where we were outside on this stage and it was extraordinarily hot. It must have been, you know, for England, it must have been in the 30s, uh, this this gig we were doing outside. And we were under a... We were, we were, on, a, we were on a stage and over the top of the stage was like a see-through kind of like um, bubble thing. We called it the bubble stage. And it was like basically this like polythene covering, if you will. And it was like a greenhouse in there. And funny enough, it was that hot. The Tolex on one of my Marshall amps melted. Um, it melted. Just it, it, it started to melt the glue and peel off. I had to keep guys like, sticking it back down. <laughs> um, and my orange amp melted. And all the gaffer tape we had on the stage melted. It was that hot. 
and um, it's funny like that entire gig I did on uh, I did uh, on on that guitar and not once did the neck get sticky and I was sweating and I don't sweat I, I I'm one of those people who do I, I do not sweat like buckets I don't drip or anything like that I, you know I occasionally get like in a little bit like that but very very rarely do I sweat and it was just pouring off me because it was so hot and I was drinking like water by the bucket loads to kind of stay maintain hydration at that point in time because you're performing you're losing a lot and um that entire gig it, it never got sticky uh and it never has it, it's one of those weird 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 freaky incidents where a poly finished lacquered to the teeth neck has never got sticky on me so it's one of the rare ones where i don't remove the finish which is kind of one of my first things to do if i get a guitar normally is is take the finish off the neck because I don't invariably. I don't really like lacquer on the necks anymore. I, I did it to one guitar years and years ago, and I liked it so much I just immediately did it to all my guitars because <laughs> I was like, "That's so much nicer." Uh, some obviously I haven't done that to, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's number nine per tube is my Squire Jaguar. Absolutely gorgeous because I could not look at it. Moving on to number eight now. So number eight is my Oswald Telecaster. Again, I do not have that guitar with me here. Uh, but my Oswald Telecaster is my dream Telecaster, and, and Master Nick just nailed it. You know, I wanted it slightly different. I, I, I wanted a, I wanted like a Blackguard, so I wanted, you know, yellow, Blackguard, Maple Neck. Uh, but I was a bit of Deaverish, so I wanted it not Telecaster width, I, uh, like, you know, fatness in the body. I wanted it strap width because I'm so used to that. Uh, and that was one of my big problems with Telecasters, anyways, their size, and also they're, they're just a block. And I didn't like that. So Master Nick made it f smaller in the body. We put the belly cut in it. We put the arm carve in it. Um, we cloned Mr. White's neck. Uh, so my my main strap is, its neck is basically my Telecaster neck. And it's just perfect. And Nick's pickups are just amazing. And in the words of my friend Ian, that guitar is just music. And it really is. It's just stunning. Uh, and it's my dream Telecaster. Uh, it really is. Um, I do have the Jet Telecaster here, but you know I don't see that guitar with me for the rest of my life, whereas I can see the Oswald Tele with me for the rest of my life. And the really cool thing is, wh when I got it, Nick had kind of like relicked it a bit, but it was yellow. And uh, over the years of me using it uh, at home and gigging and whatnot, and it's, sit it's sitting in UV light it's faded now and it's a really weird color it looks ridiculously old people would achieve if you see it in person it still comes across as yellow on the camera but when you actually get up to it in person it's really off white and it's really off yellow should i say technically and uh funny enough it's still yellow under the scratch plate if you take the scratch plate off it's perfectly yellow underneath but it's not where it's been exposed to light basically and it's amazing. It looks so old. All the lacquer's checked. It, it's it's got more dints and dents. It's got plectrum wear. It's got scratches and gouges and all sorts of other stuff. And it's been used. And it's just immense. And if I ever needed a Telecaster for anything, I mean, I don't really play Telecasters a lot. Hence why I only have two of them. Um, and technically, I only need one of them, and that's this one. Um, if I ever needed a Telecaster for, like, you know, a band I was in where they say, oh, you need a Telecaster, that would be it. You know, I, I wouldn't need anything else. It just sounds amazing, feels amazing, is amazing. Master Nick is a genius. And that's the first of many Oswalds on this list. So, um, so yeah, so that's number eight. Uh, we're going to move on to number seven now. Number seven is uh, my first ever Oswald guitar that Nick made for me. Uh, it's basically like a 50s Strat copy. Um... I remember Nick contacted me in like November of 2016 and um, he said, I want to build you a guitar. What would you like? And I was like, well, I've always wanted a 50s style Strat, but all the Fender ones that come have like harsh V-necks. I don't like V-necks. So he goes, I've got you. And um, he made me basically my dream 50s Strat, you know, and that's another guitar people too. But now if you look at it, looks ancient. You know, it's faded. There's all the lacquer's checking. It's poly, it's nitro lacquer. Um, it's got chips, dings, dents. The fretboard's wearing through. Uh, the lacquer on the fretboard's wearing through. It's got it's got all sorts of things. You know, it's got uh, the scratch plate's gone off color. It's no longer white. It's just a beast, absolute beast. And again, originally that guitar had Seymour Duncan SSL ones in it, which I didn't like at all. I struggled with that guitar with those pickups it was just dead 
lifeless and, and, and dull. And um, my very good friend at Evil Sheet Pickups made me my own set of pickups for that guitar, uh, basically copies of 50s style Strat pickups. And they went in and they ain't coming out. It, that guitar sounds so good with those pickups in it. It's just perfect, an Evil Sheet rule. So, um, and again, I just couldn't do it without that guitar. I just like I say, and there's there's video footage of Nick building that guitar and bringing it to life. You can see it. And it's just, it's got, again, so much attached to it. It's a start of something. Not 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 necessarily just for me, but for Nick, you know. Um, he had built guitars before that, but I, I, I believe that was kind of like the first one. And, you know, and it just means so much to me, that guitar does. I couldn't be without that ever. Uh, and so much so, actually, I kind of want that as my other main gigging guitar. I really do. Uh, I'm, I haven't got it as my main gig guitar at this point in time, but I'm drawn more and more to it as being my standard tuning guitar. Because when we play over Trio, we play in E flat and standard. Um, and I did. U I, I've used that guitar. At, I've probably used that guitar second most in all my Oswalds, next to a certain one, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, um, so yeah, number seven, people choose my first ever Oswald. And again, one day one day when I can afford it and when it's possible, I'm going to go to see Master Nick. I'm going to visit him in the Netherlands and I'm going to take that guitar back to him. We'll do like a little reunion thing with it and uh, I'm sure he'll say, oh my God, what the hell is that? What did I build? Um, but uh, but it really is like, it, it, it's, it, it's one of those guitars that will be forever with me. It will never, ever, you know, until I'm no longer around, that guitar will be with me. Until it can't be, because I won't be here, and that's always, that's 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 always the heartbreaking thing about guitars. I find people tube is like you know once you're gone, you can't. These things aren't. You can't play them anymore, and it, it it's it's funny enough. It, it's that thought process, and forgive me for being a bit morbid and macabre here, but it, it's that thought process that kept me going when I just wanted my life to stop. Yeah, it, it's that thought process. It, you know, it really is the guitar that kept me alive. It really is. It's it's the guitar that kept me here. Because if I, if I cease to be, I'm trying to put it in a nice way, I couldn't play my guitars, and um, I love them, and I want to play them for as long as I can. So, um, and again, people people always say like, you know, why is there why do you, you know, why do you love the guitar so much? It's like because they're my reason for being alive right now. You know, I owe for the guitar everything. Um, it came, it came along and picked me when I needed it, and uh, it's always there. It's always there, and uh, I find it very hard to. Um, hated a guitar I do because I, I I think they've all got something special in them they've all got something lovely in them there's all there's always a voice in there whether it's it's not a particularly good voice it's or, or a strong voice it's still got a voice and um yeah they, they mean the world to me guitars though. I, I love them and um yeah I, I couldn't I can't be about guitars I can't be about guitars they really are my reason for being here and um I don't take that lightly, you know. I, I, uh, I um, I don't have the words. Uh, anyway, I hope you understand what I mean. Anyway, that that first Oswald is is really really special. It's it's a really really special guitar. <sighs> okay, so I'm uh, gonna move on now to uh, uh questions. My brain. Anyway. Guitar number six, and I do have that here, so give me a second. Okay, so guitar number six is my 1979 Fender Strat, which I is probably one of my newest acquisitions in my guitar collection. I, I, I really wanted a nice 70s Strat, and I used to have a 77, and in all fairness, it was kind of crap. It was a dog, compared to this. Uh, and I've tried a lot of 70s Strats, and... They were either too heavy or the neck wasn't right or they didn't speak right, then they didn't speak to me. And then when this one came up for sale, people too brown near Queenie's, I was like, I've got to try it. I've got to try it because I, I, I had some inheritance money uh, from my mum's, uh, my, 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 sorry, my dad's mum. 
uh, when she passed, she left us some money. And with that money, I, I, I didn't want her to kind of like spend it on on anything. I, it, I wanted to spend it on a guitar that I was going to keep forever. And it had to be the right guitar. And I was looking for a 70s Strat. And, um, and this one came up for sale literally just just it just well it wasn't in budget to be honest with you. i still had to I had to pay a bit extra but um but i won't be able to afford it without that and i just remember like going to try it, it and and i met the guy who had this guitar it, he what it wasn't his he had he had traded it uh the original owner of his guitar so basically a one owner guitar uh this guy just basically was kind of like flogging it for this other guy um he had traded it for a custom shop. He didn't want this guitar. He wanted a custom shop guitar. And um, I just basically sat in the back of the van and it was all out of tune. And it, it, it was kind of like the pickup, the, the setup was a nightmare. Everything was kind of like a bit of a mess. Uh, but it just had everything right. I could feel it. I could feel it was just right. Like the weight of it. This thing is not heavy. It's light. You know, for, for a Strat, it's about the normal Strat weight. Uh, the neck on it is just incredible, absolutely incredibly comfortable neck. It's it's, it's stunning. Uh, the pickups as well. Its voice was perfect. It was exactly what I wanted from a seventies Strat, and it had the big headstock, which I am in love with. I actually prefer the big headstock to the small headstock, and I, I like the big Stratocaster logo. Um, and it, it just ticked all the boxes. It really did. It just ticked all the right boxes. Um, like I say, this one's been modded as well, but only aesthetically. Um, it was originally natural with black scratch plate, black covers. Uh, I still have the black switch tip on the select switch and also the black tremolo switch uh, 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 end. Um, but I didn't want it to be white. And again, because I'm not selling the guitar, I'm not worried about resale. So I sprayed it off white color, like Jimi Hendrix's Woodstock Strat, and put a white guard on it, white pickup covers, which technically didn't fit, and I had to drill, I had to drill the holes out bigger. So technically, they don't match, but I don't care, it gives it charm. Uh, white knobs on it. I kept the original black switch tip and the original, I think, just as a little bit of homage to it. But other than that, these original pickups, original electronics. Uh, machine heads it's got a brass nut which i do want to change at some point i'm not the biggest brass nut fan but it's got the original trim and everything uh you know free bolt neck um doesn't move at all um the neck pocket on this guitar is actually really good a lot of 70s fenders neck pockets are questionable but uh not on this one Pikachu. this one's great and then like i say this one is a keeper for like you know it's just stunning it's just stunning, and I, I, I seem to have bought it just in time because 70 Strat's prices recently have just gone through the roof. It's crazy. I don't get it. Uh, no one wanted these things, and all of a sudden, they're really expensive. I don't really know why. The only thing I would like to change at some point is put a three-way selector in it. It's got a five-way in it, but it is the original. But I don't really care about originality with these kind of things. They need to work, you know. Um, it also needs its wiring tidying up. It's a bit of a mess in there. I also want to Get it rewired so it's a master volume, master tone, and the middle tone does absolutely nothing. Sorry, people, I've got hiccups. Uh, freeway selector, master tone, master volume, happy days. So that'll happen at some point. Um, I'm probably going to take it to Monty's guitar, though, to do that. Other than that, this guitar, like I say, is a keeper. This is my 70 strap people tube. I am in love with it, and I did the relic job as well. Um, you know, if I was if it was if I was going to have it refinished, I was going to relic it. So. Um, and it is quite, it's not a heavy relic, you know, but I, I do love it and it just fits to the guitar. And like I say, it just sounds and plays amazingly. It's not it's not far off needing a refret, but there's still plenty of life in there yet. Uh, yeah, you can still, you can still play it really well. And the neck on this one, I haven't stripped either because again, the lacquer on this one, it, it's just too perfect. <laughs> it does get a bit sticky, this, this neck does. It's not like the Squire Jag, but it's just too too awesome and i love this guitar and again like i say i'm really happy i was able to spend my like the inheritance money i got on something that i'm going to keep forever it wasn't just kind of like a fly by night thing of just frittering it away this is something that i'm going to keep forever and it's going to be with me and make music and until i can't with it unfortunately then it'll hopefully go to somebody else who will make music with it um but yeah so yeah this is uh guitar number six my 1979 fender strat and it is beautiful.
it sounds beautiful. It looks gorgeous. I love the off-white. I'm so happy that I resprayed it because <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the natural strats. They don't, they don't really do it for me. Anyway, Puchu, that is guitar number six. Guitar number five, I don't have with me, unfortunately. So I'm just going to put this one back. And we'll, well, actually, I'll, tell you what, I won't put it back. I'll just put it here. You can, you can sit there with me. Okay, so guitar number five, I don't have with me either because it's awaiting a refret. So guitar number five is my Fender ST62 reissue from 1990. This is the guitar that I basically, when I bought it, it was in the worst state I've ever seen a guitar. Uh, I've seen some pretty horrible guitars come through in my life, how dirty and, and grimy and gross. But the ST was an absolute, I wish I had filmed it and took some pictures of it, to be honest with you, I really do. I didn't because I was just kind of like, I, as soon as I got it, I locked myself away and cleaned it. Like, I literally had that thing apart and cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it. Um, but it needs a refret now. It, it, the frets are absolutely trolled on it. That thing, it, you can barely play it. It's, it's, it's really difficult to play. It needs a refret. And that's going to happen soon, if not already by the time this video goes out. No, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. This, it might have been refretted by the time, but it is my next goal to get that guitar re refretted because it definitely needs it, and I need to play that guitar. Uh, so that guitar is the one that where basically I was going to see how close could I get a reissue to an original. So the body has been refinished by uh, Scott over at Golden Era Guitars, and I also have one of his scratch plates on it as well now. If you've seen the change in the scratch plate, uh, changing, let's change the scratch plate video that I did a bit ago. Uh, that was the guitar. I changed the scratch plate and it's just perfect. You know, it's, it's got period correct hardware, machine heads, everything. I recarved the neck to be more like a, an original a CBS strat. Um, I stripped the lacquer off the neck as well. It's got, it's just right. It's so close to an original, it's terrifying. And it sounds great as well. It, it sounds insane. It's got the original pickups in it. Uh, it does have a replacement five-way switch in it, which at some point I want to change. But at this point in time, I'm scared of changing it because I don't want to lose the sound it's got. So it stays. But it's a really weird five-way because what somebody's done is they've wired it in, but it doesn't have position two and four. It's just got position one, one, uh, two. Uh, sorry. Yeah, position one, one, three, five, and five, <laughs> which I love. Um, but the really cool thing is, uh, which I don't know if this is meant to happen with that guitar, but when you're on the bridge, so you're in your bridge pre-up, so you're in position one, the bridge tone doesn't do anything. But if you knock it up into position technically two, it's still just the bridge pickup on the ST, but the tone control is now engaged. And I don't know if somebody did that by accident or that's actually meant to be. I don't know. But either way, Poochu, that's my guitar. That's another guitar I could not do without, and it's just wow. And not only from looks perspective and sound perspective, but the way that thing feels. Oh my god, it's just heavenly. And like I said, I do have a series on what I did to that guitar. I do have like uh, not. I I actually need to get that in a playlist, Poochu, those videos. But I do have like a little. Uh, I do have a uh, videos of me basically making that guitar more like an original um so yeah so um if you're interested in that kind of thing go there but again i don't have it here at this point in time because i say i can't really play it and i left it at home i would normally bring it back to queenie's but i left it so i didn't play it because the frets are already trolled and i would just keep playing it and playing it and playing it so i i need to stop so i've i've, I've left it at my house to uh What's the word? Take away temptation, if you will. So, that's number five. So, we are, uh, yeah, we're kind of you know, over, just over halfway. So, uh, guitar number four that I cannot live without is this one. So, yeah, guitar number four. Just when I thought I was done looking for the Les Paul for me, the, the one, I thought I had found it in the Revelation RTL 59. I thought, done. Nothing's going to beat that guitar. It's got the sound I want. It's got the feel I want. Didn't have the look I wanted, sadly. Um, it was Cherry Burst. So I stripped it. So it's natural now. It's, it's like Paul Kossoff's or Mark Boland's or Mick Ronson. Um, but it still never looked the way I wanted it because I love gold top Les Pauls. And it never... It, it, it was always kind of a thing of like, you know, should I gold top it? Should I gold top it? 
Something gets stopping me every time. I was like, no, no, and I can't, I can't, can't do it. It looks too cool. But I was really kind of like not looking. I was like, I found my Les Paul. It's there. That's it. Sounds like a Telecaster on steroids. It feels great. You know, it stays in tune. It works. Jobs are good. And then one day I was in the Andertons and I happened to see this. This is an East Coast. And I forget what they're called. L100 or something like that. I don't know. And I happened to see this on the wall. And I thought, I've got to try it. It's 200 quid. I've got to try it. Um, I might be able to walk away with a gold top. And we went in, and this was after trying Murphy Labler's Paul's. And we went into one of the, the isolation booths in Anderton's, plugged into a Boss Katana, and there's a video of this. The first time, the first thing I played on it is in that video. And I was just like, Huh? Huh? Can't be serious. So just when you think your 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 quest is done for a certain style of a guitar or a certain guitar pivot tube, something always comes on and throws like a little spanner into the mix, so to say. And this was the this was that spanner. And this has basically knocked all my Les Pauls off the top spot and just again I just couldn't live without this guitar now. This will this be my Les Paul for life? Who knows? Because now I don't know. You know, I have my Telecaster for life, my Oswald, but is this going to be the Les Paul that kind of like stays with, you know, it will definitely stay with me for the rest of my life, but will it be number one? I don't know. I really don't know. Because I thought that about the Revelation, and the Revelation was that for years. And before that, it was my vintage V100 for years. And the V100's probably the Les Paul that I played the most. But this guitar, this one here, PewTube, is absolutely the one. So... It's kind of stock-ish, so what, uh, there, there is slight, some slight things I've done. I have put these thumb bleeder things on the volume pot covers there because I like to be able to kind of like know where I am. I like, I, uh, I do it on my strats all the time. I like, I like, I, I turn down to like eight or I'll turn down to six or five or four or three. I like to know numbers and um, on the Les Paul I find it really hard. So I've, I bought these thumb bleeder things uh, and I've... I've shoved them on the guitar, basically, and they really, really help. Uh, another thing I have done, people tube, is I have de-waxed the humbuckers. I basically go in there, take the cover off, and get rid of all the wax that surrounds the coil. Uh, and I think that, does, I mean, this thing sounded perfect even without doing that, but it sounded even more perfect when I removed the wax. And another thing I did as well, it initially had the covers off, and I got a bit carried away one day, and I was, I was just, I was, it had the covers off, and I was just like, I like it with the covers off, because it, it, you know, it looked the way I wanted it to kind of look. But I got a bit carried away one day, and I was sanding these covers, because, you know, that's what you do. Uh, and um, I went through the chrome, and there was like this kind of like copper kind of finish underneath. And I was like, huh, oh, that's pretty cool. And I kept sanding, and all of a sudden, gold. A gold thing appeared. And I was like, you're kidding. So I sanded, 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 sanded. And then I got this extraordinarily cool pattern. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the pickups. So you can kind of see, hopefully, there's some still some chrome. And then there's that kind of like bronzy colour. And then they're gold predominantly. But I got these really cool patterns on the humbuckers. So after doing that, I was like, they've got to go back on. They look too cool. And again, I do actually prefer the sound of this guitar with the covers off. But the way it looks with these gold pickups, I don't know what it is. I just had to have it. And I just I just had to have it looking that way. So they've gone back on, Poo So if that's why. But they're, they're still the stock pickups, stock electrics, stock bridge tailpiece, selector switch. I haven't done anything to the frets. I haven't done anything to the machine heads. I don't have to. This guitar is as it is. It's just an aesthetic thing of those. I would like to get um, a 50s, yeah, proper 50 style pickup rings because they're really, yeah, they're a lot taller than these ones. These are really, these are really small, and I'd love to get some proper ones. But my God, this guitar is insane, and my God, does it play? It plays itself. I mean, there's 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 guitars in my collection that are easy to play, but then there's this one. 
and basically I think the two guitars out my all my guitars that are the easiest to play are probably this one my Ibanez Gem uh, Junior and also my 62 Strat which we'll talk about in a minute um, but yeah this is a guitar I couldn't do without I can't live without this guitar now like I say is this where the Les Paul hunt ends I don't know we'll find out I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna say yes or no but my God. Do I love this guitar? And it's a gold top as well, Pooja. And it's the right kind of gold I wanted as well, which kind of like, you know, it kind of darkens off and then brightens up. It's not, it doesn't have that greenish tinge, uh, which uh, uh, old gold tops do, which uh, I have a prop here, Pooja. So this is the East Coast gold top. And there's like what a real kind of gold top would look like. This is obviously a replica. But um, this is what well, that's sort of that's the original gold and you can see the difference in the way they age my crikey is that heavy but yeah you'll see this guitar at some point soon um but yeah so but this is this is me this was me and these humbuckers sound amazing it just responds plays feels has everything i want it to and i love these pickup covers as well i love the freak accident that happened with them i don't even know what made me do that but uh I'm glad I did. Anyway, so that's, uh, where are we, number four? This is my East Coast Gold Top Les Paul. Absolutely gorgeous guitar. I love it to bits. And again, can't be without this guitar now. I really can't. So, moving on to number three now. I'm going to be with you. Number three is a guitar that basically... I don't have words to describe how much this guitar means to me. I really do not have words. It came along at a time where I needed something. And I didn't even know what that was. And this gave it to me. It gave me comfort. It gave me peace. It gave me a vent and a let out and, a, and an anger management and a sadness management. And it gave me everything I needed and keeps doing it. And this is a guitar that I just can't be without. So number three, people tube is... The Red Oswald. And this guitar... It's, it's, it's developed a fault. And I'll tell you what that fault is in a minute. And it's not a fault of the guitar. It's a fault of me. But this guitar came along when I was in trouble. And uh, it's funny, actually, if you were true. This guitar is, is, is strange because... Um, when I got it, I, I was going, for, I was going for a breakup, and it wasn't pretty, and it wasn't nice, and I wasn't in a good place. And um, it's funny, this guitar. I've got a video of me unboxing and, and showing this guitar. It brought me to the edge of tears, and I don't know why. It just did. And it was just something about seeing it and touching it and feeling it. It just brought me to the edge of tears, and it still does now. It's this guitar means so much to me that. Where I am, it is. It's one of those, you know what I mean? Where this guitar, where I go, this guitar follows me. Much in the same way as the last two, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, if I was to narrow down my guitars to just three guitars, if I could only own three guitars, this is one of them. And obviously this, this top one, two, three that you're about to see, they're my top three. And this is just a masterpiece. Master Nick did something here that I can't ever put my finger on. And again, this wasn't as beaten up when I got it. But like I say, if you go back and you watch the video, all this is me. I chewed this finish away because I was in a bad place. And this is the only guitar I played. I didn't play any of my other guitars for months because I was just playing this guitar. And I mashed it. I was I was so angry. I was so upset. So it just basically caught it, and I just finish the finish. Just I just killed the finish. And you can see, if you look up here, all the scrap, all the all the scratches in the finish, how heavy I was picking the, at the guitar. And again, you can see you'll see bits of nitro in there, but that and also this dark spot here, the dark spot, that's the initial relic that Nick had put in there. That's the initial bit of wear that Nick had put on there. Um, and again, basically, I've just beasted it because this guitar was my... 
it was my vent. It was it was it was it was the way I could um, sustain, if you will. And I love it to bits. And I love it so much. And the next, like my sixty-two freeway selector, Nick's pickups. Um, you know, uh, usual wiring. It's a hardtail as well, which I love. Again, initially when I uh, requested it to be a hardtail from Nick, I thought, oh, it'd be good for you know, alternate tunings, and that's all I use it for. And when it came, it was just so much more than just that. It's an everything guitar, this one. In all fairness, I class this as probably my second main guitar of my life. Um, which is a bit of a strange thing, because this is number three on the list. I've still got number two to go. But next to number one, which I'm guessing you can guess which one that is if you've been around long enough, this one's that. It just is. Um, I think it's because I'm the only person to ever own this guitar. And the th I'm the only person to ever own my number one guitar as well. So, And because of that, because no one else has owned these and, and they haven't been in anybody else's hands really apart from mine, and because they've gone through harsh times with me, there's something in them that he's just like, I, I just can't describe. And Nick... The gift of this from Nick is just like beyond. And this guitar is just phenomenal. It just the way it feels, the neck. It's just incredible. There is no worse to describe how amazing this guitar is. It's um for lack of a better word, people would you, this is probably the best guitar I own. And I know that sounds weird because you're like, well, why isn't it number one then? But well, that's a different thing altogether, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is probably the best guitar I own. For playability, sound, recording-wise, feel, vibe, everything. It's just perfect. It's insane. And uh, I say, I've got Charlie on the back of the headstock. I've got my friend Charlie on the back of the headstock. I've got my friends Marja and Nicole on, on the back here as well with a sticker of their band. And... It's just perfect. It really is. And I can't be without this one. I just can't be without this guitar. This this is this is this is me. Um it really is. Uh it gets me a bit choked up, people choose to be honest with you. It really does get me a bit choked up, this guitar does, because it just means so much to me. Um It was never not with me when I got it. You know, for months and months and months and months, this thing was always with me, and it will always be with me. But the fault that I developed with this guitar is I love gigging this guitar, but I'm terrified of gigging this guitar because of idle hands of other people. If this guitar was to be stolen, because when I'm at a gig... I can't necessarily be around my guitars all the time. There's always going to be at some point where I'm going to lose track of a guitar case or this, that, and the other. Invariably, that's very rare with me. Very, very rare. Because I've had people try to steal my stuff in the past. I've had people walk out of my guitars, which I then had to chase. I've had all sorts of stuff happen. And because of that experience, I tend to keep an eye. I have a very Hawkeye thing. But there are occasions where you know, you'll know you get talking to somebody and it'll take your attention away from things. And that's when the devil's hands come out to play people tube and people see their opportunity. And the idea of getting this guitar stolen and never seeing it again would kill me. It wouldn't just break my heart, it would kill me. I couldn't deal with the fact of not having this guitar. So I don't gig it anymore. And it's not because I don't want to, it's because I'm too afraid. And I remember Jeff Beck said something along the same lines of some of his guitars that he just will not take out because he's just too afraid that somebody will half inch it, you know. And I've got that with quite a lot of my guitars, you know, especially um, probably the only three on this list that I don't have that, well, sorry, four I, on this list I don't have that with are my Chapman, the... Uh, first ever Oswald, the ST62, and the East Coast Gold Top. Those are the four that I will still gig with, but still keep a keep a very sharp eye on. I do not let my gear out of my sight. But there, are, like I said, there are occasions where you can get distracted or pulled away, or something can go wrong. You you can never predict anything, you know. 
but I keep a hell of a close eye on my stuff because, like I say, I have had a lot of people try to steal stuff. No one's ever, you know, well, I say no one's ever. I've had plenty of stuff stolen. Um, but I've had, I've had to chase a fair few people through the tube, and I'll maybe talk about that another time. But um, the idea of this guitar or any of these guitars being stolen or any of my guitars being honest, being stolen, but especially like this one and these other two that I've got to talk about or some of the others on here, I just couldn't cope with. I don't know... I would have to go all Liam Neeson and basically hunt them people down um, because I just couldn't cope with it. So I'm terrified of gigging this guitar through the tube. I gigged it for a while. I, I used to use it quite a lot. But I couldn't do it anymore, not for now, unless I know the venue's secure and I can have these guitars backstage. But because I gig pubs, I don't get to gig venues where I can have these things secure and out the way and with me at all times. I gig pubs. You know, I don't have, I don't have venue. Uh, you know, I'm not like Joe Bonamassa who can take a 59 Les Paul out and know it'll be safe because it'll be checked, uh, constantly checked on. Um, like I say, and I don't want variables. I don't want variables of somebody seeing it and going, huh. I think I'll have that. He's distracted. Or I'll get somebody to distract him and I'll half inch it. So my failing aside, I love this guitar. And I couldn't be without it. And I play it a lot. I don't necessarily play it in videos, but I do play it a lot. You know, just because you don't see me playing it in videos doesn't mean it doesn't get used. It does. And um, and I say that that this is this is this is proof of how much it's been played. And it, it proceeds to get more dings and dents, and the lacquer keeps checking, and the scratch plate keeps getting scratched up, and the frets keep getting worn down, and it just keeps going, people too, because again, it's one of the best guitars, if not the best guitar I own. This one. Um, and also, it's got gauge nines. Uh, I I had to gauge tens on this for quite a while, and then one day I put nines on it, and it was just happier with nines. So it'll always have nines on it. And my God, the nines just make it just heaven. The neck is amazing. The action's amazing. The pickups are amazing. The way it feels. It's got a three-way selector. Hardtail as well, so it's stable as rock. It, this thing doesn't go out of tune. It doesn't know how to go out of tune. I'm pretty sure of it. But yeah, this is, uh, out of, you know, Master Nick's a genius, but this one is otherworldly. Absolutely otherworldly guitar. Okay, so moving on to guitar number two. Okay, okay. guitar number two. We are nearly there, people with you. So uh, I will do an outro jam, by the way. I don't know what guitar to play, though, in the outro jam. I'm thinking the East Coast Gold Top, to be honest with you. Anyway, guitar number two of my top ten guitars I couldn't live without is this one. This is a very humbling instrument for one, for many reasons. For many, many reasons. It's my 1962 Fender Strat, which without a lot of you out there would not have come true. This would not have been a possibility. And anyone who helped me, I don't have the words. I don't have the words. Because you made a dream, you made my dream come true, which, you know doesn't happen every day and i never thought it would happen um but yeah it, it's it's insane to own this guitar i remember when i first died out playing guitar and got into john for and then i read an article saying oh my his his favorite guitar is a 1962 strat i was like oh i want to get a 1962 fender strat not knowing that that was going to be expensive um and then thinking oh well that's never going to happen then and then 2017 this happened who would have thought it not me i'd never saw this coming it wasn't something that i ever even looked for or planned because i thought it's never going to happen forget it you know um and here it is uh like i say recently we've had i've had the uh the bridge and the neck pickup rewound because they just they were just, they'd gone open circuit and they just didn't sound very good anymore. And now it's back to uh, full voice, thanks to Mo uh, Matt at Monty's Guitars, who absolutely nailed it. But this guitar is just, it's the best playing vintage Strat I've ever played. And I've been lucky to play a lot of them, people would you. But this one by far is beyond special. I apologize about my phone again. But this one has something that none of you have ever has. And that was why it was just kind of like it was calling. 
Um, like I say, it is uh, it is a refin. Uh, the original tremolo isn't in it. I've got videos on this thing. You see it all the time. Um, funny enough, it, it just sounds amazing. It rings. It just sounds incredible. Um, it's just a dream. Like, uh, I do have to pinch myself sometimes that I own it. Like, it's one of those things where some some days it's just my guitar. And then other days I'm like, it's a 62 Strat. It's like a dream guitar. And I'm like, oh my God. And I have to just kind of like wake up again and go, oh my God, I get to play this thing every day. And I do play it every day. Um, it's just incredible. And again... I have videos with the original owner, Malcolm, who owned this thing from, from new. You know, he bought it in 1963. And uh, basically, I'm the second owner of this guitar and will be the second owner of this guitar until I'm no longer here. This is not one of those guitars that, like I say, will be with me until I, I'm not here. This guitar will outlive me. I know it will. All my guitars will outlive me. But it's just incredible. The way it feels to play, it's so playable everywhere it's just unreal it's just such a great feeling guitar the neck is so skinny up this end and it gets really fat down the bottom end like old strats do um and it's just incredible it's just incredible it has had a few replacement bits like the nuts been replaced like i say we've had them rewound um tremolo original tremolo's gone it's had uh two different jack sockets in it no sorry three different jack sockets in it um what else it's been refretted twice um, Malcolm had it refretted, and then I've had it refretted in the time I've had it. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, I say, it's, it's a refin. It was originally Fiesta Red, as you can see in there. Um, and it, it got refinned. Uh, Malcolm had it refinished in the, uh, sorry, sorry, bass, uh, in the 70s. Uh, and it's actually been black longer than it's been red, uh, which is why I'm not doing anything to it. It stays black, you know. Uh, but what there is a temptation for me to spray it white, uh, and get nitrocellulose lacquer and spray it white over the black uh, to dictate my period with it. Because again, you know what I'm like for white guitars. But I'm not going to do that. Um, there was also a temptation to kind of like get it redone in Fiesta Red. But I'm not doing that. It's been black longer. And I want to respect this guitar's history. So it stays black. It's not going anywhere. It's just fantastic. And like I say, it's a dream come true, people too. And again, thanks to... Uh, uh, some of you out there who helped me with this because it's just out of this world. Absolutely out of this world. This guitar is probably the most finicky of my collection. It requires a lot of TLC, uh, especially on the electrics front. The volume pot's always a bit dodgy. The select switches can be a bit dodgy uh, and the pots can be a bit iffy. Uh, I've also had it rewired as well, people tube. So it does have a three-way selector in it. Again, I don't use Vision 2 and 4, so I don't care. Uh, about those but it, it has been rewired i have a master volume and a master tone this pot does absolutely nothing it's basically like rory gallagher's uh strat um but again getting the pickups rewound it had to be done it this guitar needs to work this isn't a museum piece i'm not gonna have this sat around doing nothing this is a guitar that i want to play and will play so having the, the pickups rewound is a no-brainer. And the same thing goes, if this pot dies, well, or when this pot dies, or if it dies, or when this dies, or when the select switch dies, or whatever, they'll just be replaced. I'll just change them. I will keep the originals, obviously, but they will just be replaced. Same thing with the frets. When the frets wear out again, it'll get refretted again. When the machine heads wear out, they'll get replaced. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's a functioning guitar. This isn't a, this isn't a showpiece, you know. This is, this is a, this is a, this is a guitar that ne it needs and wants to and will be played until I can't. And then hopefully it'll go to somebody who will play it as well. But in my lifetime, people tube, this guitar may very, I may, I may very well see this guitar become a hundred years old <laughs> in my lifetime, which is kind of crazy. But again, this is a guitar that I will never ever leave, uh, lose. I, I, I can't, I can't, um, I can't lose this guitar, you know. Um, it just means too much to me. It means too much to me. It doesn't go out gigging unless it's a very, very, very special occasion, in which case I will gig it. But again, because the places I play, 
you don't take 62 strats to a pub to gig you just don't do it that that, that is just asking for trouble so i don't i don't take these things uh, like this to pubs same as the 79 i don't really take those things to pubs unless i can keep a close eye on them and in which case i still wouldn't want to take it but if i can play like a theater venue where backstage there's only us and people we know uh, uh, people i know who are gonna get access to things i would gig this like for instance if, if a trio went on tour just doing theater shows i'd be taking this it'd be a no-brainer but other than that you know and uh yeah i just can't be without this guitar so yep yeah, that's number two so down to number one what can it be i reckon hmm yes i'm sure a lot of you have guessed you know him you love him it's mr white everybody this is my 2002 fender mexico 60s reissue that i bought in 2004 and basically the guitar that i learned everything i know on it's been refretted four times one two three four times yep it's on its fourth refret uh it's gonna need refretting again soon because these are nearly trolled um <laughs> so it'll be the fifth refret um and it's just the guitar for me. This is the guitar that taught me and I learned everything on. And this is the guitar I've played more than any guitar I will ever own. No guitar will ever beat the hours I've played on this guitar. I find it very hard to believe. Because basically I had this guitar from 2004 and it was my main guitar till 2013. So, yeah, from 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, nine years, basically. Near enough a decade. Pretty much a decade. Well, actually, technically, I still took it out, didn't I, at that time? So, yeah, I would say 10 years. For a decade, this, this is the only guitar I played. Um, I did have other guitars that I did play. But, invariably, it was this one. And, again, I learned all the stuff I know on this neck. Everything I know about the guitar, I learned on this guitar and this neck. I figured out my scales. I figured out the Jimi Hendrix, John Fashanti, you name it. I learned it on this guitar. I figured it out. And it was my main gigging guitar, my main guitar, but I just played all the time. I was never without it. I was never, it was, it was never not near me. Uh, and this is basically that guitar that if I didn't have it now, I feel like I'm missing a limb. Um, I don't gig it anymore for the same reasons I don't gig my Red Oswald as in the fact of if somebody stole this I couldn't cope with it and that was what made me stop gigging this guitar because it was my main gigging guitar forever you know if there was a gig this guitar was my main guitar uh, I didn't really want to play anything else and uh, I kind of still don't in a way uh, I still have that desire to just play this guitar and if somebody said right you're not allowed any guitars bar one this would be the one. Um, but again, I don't gig it because I'm just too scared that somebody, some dozy half wit will half inch it and have a way with it. So it stays safe in, well, wherever I am. It changes, you know, all my guitars move around. They all move. Nothing's ever, nothing's ever stationary. Everything's in flux between a couple of different places. Um, you know, I don't ever keep one thing at one place for very long it will move around um you know and, and that's mainly for you know for because i i move around a lot and i like i like to go places and i like you know things here and there so um you know i have i have guitars at my bit here i have guitars at my dad's i have guitars at my mum's i have guitars at my sister's i have guitars at my brother's i have guitars all over the place and you know they, they are everywhere they are all over the place it's, it's what makes it difficult when i have to do a uh, guitar collection videos i have to go and collect them all up and bring them back and then they all go back out again um but this one these are my the, the this the, the these are kind of like the ones and mr white here is just like the one and um he's not very white anymore let's put it that way i don't know how, know how well you're able to see this people too but uh if i get it in the light right so yeah there's white paper, which it was originally. Ooh. Queenie. 
The lesser spotted queenie. Can you hear her? Look, ruining, ruining things. I never interrupt your videos. Really? Yeah, really. Anyway. She's coming back. Squeaking doors as well. Sorry. Yeah. Someone's getting a camel bite later. Anyway, back to Mr. White. So yeah, he's not really white anymore, but this is a guitar that I just can't be without. It's just everything. Uh, I've stripped the neck as well, so there's no lacquer on this. I did that years ago now. That would have been 20... 2016. I probably did that. Um, funny enough, it was actually starting to wear. I actually have worn through the lacquer there. Uh, that... There's a, there's a tiny bit of wear through to the wood there which is actually me uh, from playing the thing. I actually started to go through the lacquer, but I sped it up. But the neck on this thing is insane. Um, basically, next time it be, ne ne next time it goes to be refretted, the fretboard can't be planed anymore because the neck's getting so skinny from being planed after, for, for being refretted. The neck can't be done anymore. So when it gets refretted, it'll just have to be the way it is because it's getting skinny. But... Um, in, in all fairness, though, it really feels like my 62 up here, uh, but it kind of stays that way. Uh, it's a little bit wider, uh, E to E, than the 62. It's not really a vintage-style neck at all, but it's my neck. And it, it literally, no matter where I am on this guitar, my hand fits it. It's literally gone to the shape of my hand, this guitar. And it's just so incredibly perfect, and I love it. And again, couldn't be without this guitar. I don't know. Anyway, there you go, people tube. So that is it. That is the top 10 guitars that I own. So if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, hey, Dave, I'm going to take all your guitars, but 10, what are those going to be? These are going to be those. So, um, so yeah, there you go. Um, like I say, with number one always going to be. Yeah, this is always going to be my number one guitar. Like I say, the Red Oswald plays easier than this guitar. Uh, it really does. You know, the Red Oswald feels um, a lot easier to play. I don't know why it just is easier to play. Uh, same as um, the 62 is easier to play. But this will always be my number one, you know, because um, I just love it. And the hours I've spent on this fretboard is just outrageous. You know, it really is the guitar that taught me everything. And, uh, yeah, could never be without it. Never, ever be without this guitar. Anyway, uh, there you go, people tube. So, um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to play you out now with something. I don't know what it's going to be. I haven't got pedal board set up or anything, so we'll figure that out in a moment. But, uh, yeah, um, so yeah uh, if you like the channel, if you like what I do on this channel, uh, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Link to that is in the description box below, as well as links to my band camp where you can stream some music and uh, please consider buying some music. Again, it really helps me out. Um... There's all sorts on there. There's like soundscape albums. There's there's the trios album. There's rock stuff on there. There's blues stuff on there. There's acoustic stuff. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video for what it is. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again very soon for another one. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. And uh, yeah, see you again. Goodbye now.